12. The Night Beat starts right now. It's the last thing that you'd expect to happen at home. A boy attacked by a pack of his own dogs, and now he's fighting for his life. Plus, targeting heartbroken pet parents. San Antonio Animal Care Services is warning all pet owners of a scam that criminals are using to try and get fast cash from distraught owners. But first, we're going to start with breaking news tonight. Police are looking for a shooter who they say shot a six-year-old and a 23-year-old man. Happened on the 5800 block of Medina Base Road just before 8 o'clock tonight. Our Avery Everett is at the scene right now. So, Avery, we have to ask you, how are the victims? And also, what do police know about the shooter at this point? Well, Stephanie, emotions are high right now as police just minutes ago confirming that there were two victims. But what we do know are that both of them are facing non-life-threatening injuries. One six years old, the other 23. I want you to take a look at the scene behind me of what's left right now. Just minutes ago, officers still actively investigating out here. A sergeant says officers are still going through witness statements. As for evidence, police searched around the pool of this apartment complex where this all happened. Police confirmed one vehicle and the pool house were struck by bullets. As for what weapons were used? Officers say it seems like handgun sized weapons were used, but this investigation is still ongoing and police are still looking for suspects. They do have a suspect vehicle, a red Mercedes with silver lining and tinted windows, but there are currently no district descriptions rather of any suspects at this time. As we continue to learn more of this case, we'll keep you updated right here on air and online at KSOT.com. Reporting live, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. In other news tonight, a man is dead and a woman is injured after the owner of a stolen truck shot them while trying to get it back. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. Someone stole a man's pickup truck. And San Antonio police say that the owner tracked his vehicle to a parking lot at the South Park Mall this afternoon. And when the man got there, another man and woman were inside of the pickup truck. Now, police say the owner took out his gun and demanded that the two people inside of the truck get out. But investigators say the man inside the vehicle then pulled his own gun and shot the owner of the pickup. And that's when the owner returned fire and killed the man. The woman that he was with in the vehicle was also shot. She's in critical condition. Police Chief William McManus said that while the owner did have the right to take his property back, he still doesn't recommend taking justice into your own hands. Police in Seguin are looking for a man who they say left three people, three mentally disabled people inside of a hot car. You just saw the man. He's Corey Gill. He's supposed to be the caregiver for the three people who were found in a hot car around the Stratton Oak apartment complex. Now, so far, Gill's been suspended from his job. Investigators say that Gill is going to be charged with three counts of deadly conduct. If you know where he is, you can call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. A 13 year old fighting for his life tonight after his dogs, his own dogs, turned on him. As the night team's John Paul Barajas explains, the boy's injuries were so severe that he had to be airlifted to University Hospital. One by one, six pit bulls were removed from this home of Escalante Run in Agave Spine. The Bear County Sheriff's Office responding to the scene because the dogs attacked a 13 year old boy who lives in the home. The boy's grandparent called 911. He heard the young boy screaming, came into the room and saw at least one, possibly up to all six of these pit bulls piled up on the on the young boy attacking him. Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us the family owns all six dogs. They raised them and wanted to sell them. At this point, it's unclear why the dogs attacked the boy. The sheriff tipped his hat to the deputy that responded to this house, saying he happens to be one of only two fully trained paramedics that they have. He believes quick thinking and that training gave the victim in this case a fighting chance. He had some specialized gear with him. He was able to administer aid, but he, he actually told us that the bites that he'd seen were, were probably some of the, the worst wounds that he's ever seen on a person. The young boy was airlifted to University Hospital and is expected to survive. As for the dogs, two of the dogs were owner surrendered and then the other four were taken as part of a 10 day quarantine period. We'll see what ends up happening with with those dogs, but I'm, I'm fully expecting that the other two, unfortunately, will most likely be uh, euthanized. The sheriff says right now it's too early to tell if the parents will face charges. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. 
San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg joined President Joe Biden today to announce new federal actions to protect workers and communities dealing with extreme heat. The mayor and the president were also joined by the mayor of Phoenix, another city that's experiencing record-breaking heat this summer. The president announced that he's asking the Labor Department to issue the first-ever hazard alert for the heat and also to ramp up protections for workers in hotter climates. It's something that Mayor Nuremberg says that San Antonio has already been doing here at home. We're going to do everything possible to protect uh, our most vulnerable workers, especially those outdoor workers, uh, for basic things like being able to access water breaks. So today, the government also unveiled a new website. You see it there. It's called heat.gov. You can go on there to get information on how to cope with heat waves and other hot weather problems. Now, speaking of, let's send things on over to our meteorologist, Adam Kasky. Yeah, today we just briefly and barely hit 100 degrees this afternoon, the average being 96 and the record 106 for the day today. And for the most part, our high temperatures were around that 100 degree mark and even a little above with the exception of the hill country. The new drought monitor is in. We're going to look at that, compare it to previous drought monitor and look what kind of changes have been made in our sunny and dry pattern and an update on the tropics along with the African dust in just a bit. Adam, thank you. In other news now, mental health is a top priority for the San Antonio Fire Department, and that's because this year the number of deadly fires in San Antonio has already hit double digits. Twelve people have lost their lives. The night team's Avery Everett shows us how fire officials are helping those first responders cope. The kind of calls that we go on are reminiscent of, of bad scenes from a movie, but it's real. Every scene stays with San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood. It's very difficult for us to see a lot of the things that we see, and then the expectation is that we get back on that truck. Especially the one on Winding Oak Drive from Saturday morning. The call the other night, it, it affected so many of us because there were kids involved. SAFD has made mental health a priority this week. Yes. Checking in after the deadliest recorded house fire in more than a decade. Somebody from peer support reached out to every known person that was at that fire scene and will continue to as long as there's need. Dr. Melissa Graham runs the intensive in-house wellness program at SAFD and right alongside her is Slider. Slider, love. There you go. Just petting him is super soothing. Chief Hood and Dr. Graham say mental health has been at the forefront of the department for years, using apps and websites to offer support every single day. Yeah, it's constant check-ins. But when tragedy starts to stack up, Graham says trauma can sneak in. Trauma is cumulative. Like, this one might not get you, this one might get you, not, this one might not, this one might not. And then this one, which is not really all that different than the other ones, is the one that gets you. And Hood says staying on top of how his department needs to heal is a top priority. We put units out of service. We went to visit. So even if this scene can't be forgotten, firefighters can learn to live with what they've seen. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. So starting next Friday, Dr. Graham says that she's going to take Slider the dog to one fire station every week and fire station number one is going to be its first stop. Scam warning tonight. Animal Care Services wants to make sure that you know about this one. The agency says that someone pretending to be with ACS called a woman trying to get money. You see, the woman had been looking for her pets and the person who pretended to be with ACS called her and said that they had her pets but would return them only if she sent money through Venmo. Sounds suspicious, right? Well, they said the pets needed expensive care from the vet. And that's when the woman got suspicious, so she called San Antonio's Animal Care Services. This is indeed a scam, uh, a pretty sick scam, something that, you know, is just adding insult to injury for pet parents who are heartbroken. Now, in this case, the woman did not send money, but ACS wants to make sure that you heard that story so this doesn't happen to you. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your Night Beat News Flash. Kimberly Rubio, who lost her daughter Lexi in the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde last year, is running for mayor of that city. This comes days after the city council approved a special election for that mayoral seat. Over the last year, Rubio has been pushing for changes to gun laws in Texas and also across the country. If she wins, she'd be replacing Mayor Don McLaughlin, who's recently announced that he's running for a seat in the state house. By the way, the special election for the mayor's seat is going to take place November 7th. 
In Michigan, prosecutors are making their case for the Oxford High School shooter to spend the rest of his life in prison. That's Ethan Crumley. He shot and killed four students at his school back in 2021, just six months before the Robb Elementary School tragedy. Crumley's attorneys acknowledge that he's in line for a lengthy prison sentence, but also argue that he should also be eligible for parole. And that hearing is going to resume tomorrow. If you're planning a road trip before the summer ends, hold up. Make sure that you budget more money for gas. Gas is up 12 cents these last three days, bringing the national gallon average to 371. That's the highest it's been in eight months. And the spike is partly due to a jump in oil prices. Also, the extreme heat is causing maintenance issues at some refineries. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Now we want you to stick around redefining what it means to own a business. What some San Antonio teens are learning now that's going to help them in the future. Plus, staying hydrated in the heat. Yes, a struggle for everybody. It's also different for everyone, especially when we're in the midst of a record-breaking summer. Coming up, what to drink to help you beat the heat. Now that we're back, I'll start with a question. Have you ever thought about starting a business? Because St. Mary's University is giving high school students an opportunity to learn how to make a business work. It held a free week-long workshop, whereas the night team's Patty Santos shows us students learn the keys to success. Creating a solution is the first step to becoming an innovative entrepreneur. I hear entrepreneurs and I hear like freedom. You have the freedom to be your own boss, to set your own hours, to make profit for yourself and try to further yourself in your life journey and things. With my business teacher, we were talking Sarah Mendez Turupiates was part of the week-long free workshop at St. Mary's University geared towards high school students. Still undecided on her college major, she knows business is always a good fallback. There's so much opportunity in business and there's always going to be opportunity in business. So what, what is the, the solution you're trying to... St. Mary's University Associate Professor Sergio Palacio has been teaching the annual summer class since 2017. He says anyone can be an entrepreneur. You can start a business with no money right now. He says entrepreneurship starts with creativity, collaboration and solutions. So it's all about opportunity recognition. It's about practicing your creativity. It's about problem solving. It's about problem seeking. We're interested in helping ourselves. In just a few days, Sarah learned what takes people years to get. That success comes as a result of partnerships and openness to new ideas. It's all about working with people and working with opportunities. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. As we all know, it is the height of the summer travel season, and thousands of people are moving through San Antonio International Airport every day. Now, a lot of those travelers, they're hungry, they're thirsty. You know how it is when you travel. Now, we do know there's plenty of food and drink options in Terminal A, Terminals A and B, but here's the question. I'm sure you've wondered this. How clean are they? Yeah, right now on KSAT.com, you can see the health scores for all of the food business businesses inside the airport. Just look for that story that you see on your screen. It's going to be under the behind the kitchen door tab. Speaking of thirst, yes, we all have to stay hydrated in this heat, but is the eight glasses of water a day rule really a thing? Well, it depends. Doctors say that you don't just get hydrated from water. Coffee, tea, seltzer, and fruit juice also do the job. And a consumer expert says that everyone has different needs. Keeping properly hydrated doesn't mean measuring and downing water all day long. Everybody is different and everybody has different fluid needs. Also food. Solids plant, uh, happen to pack a lot of fluid like watermelon, different types of fruit. Yeah. The bottom line here is to pay attention to your body and to stay hydrated when you know that you're going to be exposed to the heat. Something that San Antonians are pros at already. Yes. All right. 1016 out there right now. 89 degrees. And I keep looking at that picture and thinking we need rain. We do. The new drought monitor is in. It's not looking any better than last week's. It's actually looking worse, and I'm going to give you a comparison here. Let's get right to the map, and I'll show you across the entire state. Just fine in far north Texas, especially up in the Panhandle and even northeast Texas, but we're starting to dry out, and you look at the worst drought in the entire state right here in our backyard. Fredericksburg, Kerrville, Bandera, even creeping into northwest Bear County. Uh, you go from Bernie to Fair Oaks Ranch to Leon Springs and 
Sister Dale, that's where we have the worst drought in the worst drought category. Now I'm going to show you this and now I'm going to step off the screen and gradually fade it in to just five weeks ago. Look at the difference there. The lack of dry conditions, the lack of uh, drought outside of the hill country. Now we're going back to the current one. Look how it is spread. It's just slowly drying outward from the hill country. Obviously we need some rain. We're in a pattern that unfortunately is not conducive for rain. The big blue H centered over New Mexico. That's where the upper level high is the heat high. And so the door is open for a disturbance and actually we have one over the Gulf of Mexico. This swirl right here. This is an inverted trough and this counterclockwise swirl. That energy is moving westward and I think we'll get a little bit of energy from it, but we don't have all the ingredients to really kickstart showers and storms that we need. So we're going to stay dry despite there actually being a disturbance that could throw some energy our way. And you look at the rainfall potential over the next seven days. This is just unfair. You look at the entire state of Texas. Unfortunate is probably a better word. Big donut hole right here across Texas and Oklahoma, whereas surrounding areas have higher likelihoods and higher potential for rainfall. So we even look to the tropics and there's nothing out there right now that could bring us any shower activity. As for a potential tropical cyclone, still way out in the Atlantic, a 40% chance of development over the next five days. And this is closer to Africa than anything else, but it is heading westward. And so, of course, we'll keep a close eye on it. If you notice the extra haze in the sky today, that was because of the light to moderate amounts of African dust overhead. But notice how the concentration is going to drop steadily tomorrow, then be very light on Saturday, then non-existent by Saturday night into Sunday. By the way, that has not been impacting our air quality. 77 in the morning, 91 at noon, 99 the high temperature, southeasterly wind at 5 to 15. Converse 100 tomorrow along with Poteet, Rio Medina 101 along with Bandera and Seguin an even 100. We're actually predicting 99 officially for the high in San Antonio. I know it's not a big difference, but it's that little psychological degree that makes a difference. We'll be back up to 103 though by the early part of next week, Monday and Tuesday. You know what could help us psychologically feel what? better? Talking about football. Oh, absolutely. All right. Bring it on. Let's talk about Dak Prescott. The pressure's on. Uh, you know, there's always pressure on quarterbacks throughout the league, but there seems to be a lot more pressure on the Dallas Cowboy quarterback, and this year, no different. Remember Joe Namath made a guarantee? Well, today, Dak Prescott making a guarantee. We'll have that for you when we come back. And as of now, there will be an odd number of teams in the Big 12 next year because they just added another one. The weekend is almost here and there are tons of fun things to do around town. We're going to have a preview tomorrow on GMSA and there's a little something for everyone. Be sure and tune in starting at 4.30. I'm not going to stop being aggressive. Uh, Tin or tipped, whatever, whatever you say it is. Um, I am going to lessen my interception numbers. I am going to lessen my interception numbers. Uh, that is a guaranteed. Oh, you heard it straight from the man's mouth. Doc, guaranteeing fewer interceptions this season. Let's go camping with KSAT. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Playing quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys is tough enough. A lot of eyes, a lot of pressure on that guy, even more so with Dak Prescott. He suffered through a pretty rough season last year, mainly because of so many interceptions. As you heard, he has vowed that this season will be different for the first time since camp opened. He talked today. Larry Mears was there and tells us how Dak is approaching things differently this year. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott is entering his eighth season in the NFL, all with the Cowboys. And this coming Saturday, July 29th, he will turn 30 years old. And I'll tell you what, time certainly has a way of just flashing right by us. Yeah, it goes by fast. Uh, super, super blessed. Um, yeah, to be turning 30, going into my eighth year, uh, playing the game that I love at the most elite level. Uh, something you dreamed about for a long time, and uh, as I said, it just goes by fast. Earlier this month, Dak took 16 of his offensive players on a retreat to bond and practice, and they playfully called him out because he's about to hit the big 3-0. Uh, when we were on that trip to Atlanta, I think that's when it hit me. Uh, when I was out there with the receivers working with the uh, O2X group, they had asked, who's the oldest here? 
here and you know you I, I had my head down taking notes and didn't even think to look up and heard a couple of coughs and heard my name and looked up and everybody was giving me yeah giving me crap for being the old guy. Dak will soon become the boys third offensive member to hit 30 joining Zach Martin and Tyron Smith who are both 32. Naturally some of Dak's younger teammates like 24 year old CD Lamb are messing with Dak about his age. Oh I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh he old man he hate to hear it but he's an old man. I told I told him if anybody's 30 years old you would not be able to guard me right and I was talking as far as a defensive player and Dak was like easy I'm gonna be 30 soon I said well you better keep warming that shoulder up because soon enough I'm gonna be able to outrun it. <laughs> Lamb added that he sees Dak playing well into his 30s and that Dak does a great job of keeping his body intact. David back to you. All right, Larry, thank you very much. So here's when we'll get to see Dak next tomorrow, a noon walkthrough. Then Saturday, it's the opening ceremony, always a big deal there in Oxnard. Then Sunday, it's a day off. However, Jerry Jones is going to be on instant replay Sunday night with Larry. Then Monday, it's their first practice in pads. Can't wait for that one. Texans back at it today at the Methodist Training Center right next to NRG Stadium in Houston. Here is your camp inspiration so far in Houston. The Texans have... One of their wide receivers back, Alabama's John Mechie, the third. He has been cleared to return to camp. He was the Texans' second-round pick back in 2022, but missed all of last season because he was diagnosed with APL, an acute myeloid leukoma, leukemia. Still no word yet if he will be able to play this upcoming season, but head coach D'Amico Ryans is encouraged to see him on the field. Mechie can bring a dynamic element to our offense. I think he's a dynamic playmaker with the ball in his hands when he... You know, watching him there in Alabama, you know, the plays that he made, right, it's in him. Right? He just has to get back to playing football. It's been a long time since he actually played. So it's encouraging to see him out and encouraging to see him uh, continue to get better. But definitely looking forward to him, you know, being a, a dynamic playmaker for us. All right, so here's the Texans practice schedule tomorrow. It's the first time that the fans are going to get to sit and watch practice. And Saturday, they got a day off. And then Sunday and Monday, 9 a.m. practices both days. All right, coming up, the Spurs have signed some players in the Colorado Buffaloes, and head coach Deion Sanders are on the move next. Hey, the Spurs have been using up a lot of ink today, and that's a good thing. They are filling up the roster and building a pretty deep bench to put around Victor Wimbanyama. First, they signed a couple of summer league standouts. San Antonio's second round pick from last month's draft forward C.D. Sissoko signed up. Terms not announced. Dominic Barlow will be re returning with the Young Guns in San Antonio and Austin. He signed a two-way contract, and the Spurs were done. This evening, they announced they have re-signed Sandro Mamoukilashvili. He became a Spur last March, played in 19 games, 10 points, and 7 rebounds. And it is official. The Colorado Buffaloes headed back to the Big 12. We talked about the Buffs wanting to return last night. Before they got the OK with a final vote today, the Big 12 already voted last night to accept them. So Deion Sanders is bringing that primetime show to the Big 12 next season. The conference will probably add another team to make it an even 14 since UT and OU are headed to the SEC next season as well. So a lot of teams on the move these days. Got to get ready for that. Yep. We'll be right back. Right. This is weird. The Swifties have gone seismic in Seattle. The Pop Stars Eras Tour welcomed thousands of fans to two concerts over the weekend. Their presence so powerful that it shook some seismic scales. Yeah, one Western Washington University professor even took it upon herself to verify the readings and found that the seismic patterns perfectly matched up to Swift's music. How about that? Okay. That, I know. I, no, no, no. I like it. I give, give a little respect right there to be able to show up on the seismographs that's pretty it's pretty cool anyway we are around here with a little dusty this sunset uh, this evening and there's a shot of it from bandera and you'll notice a little extra vibrant color to the sunrise in the morning because of some of that dust in the air but it's not having an impact on our air quality dew points very muggy tonight and tomorrow morning then they fall off by tomorrow afternoon so the heat index not playing a role during the hottest part of the day that's the nice thing our 99 will feel like it's close to 99 maybe even just 100 and that's going to be the case every afternoon and tomorrow's friday so Ooh, that's right excited about that all right well that does it for us here on the night beat don't forget that good morning san antonio starts at 4 30 have a wonderful night we'll see you tomorrow